Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to talk about the new CBA, the Collective Bargaining Agreement, uh, that has been released in the past few days. It's not officially signed and stuff yet by the players and stuff, but expected to be in the next coming weeks. And we're going to talk about all the changes that are going to be made if the CBA is agreed to and signed. Yeah, some pretty, pretty good changes, you know? Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for the views on vids and the shorts recently. Really appreciate it. Um, if you do like content right here, you know, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, do all stuff like that. Really appreciate it. Really helps out a lot. Uh, end of the record season. Again, we're doing a series um, for every team. I'll explain more about it in another video. But yeah, very excited for that. And um, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. So there's a few things about this new CBA that's come out and the key, like, the deals and stuff that's going to happen. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the luxury tax, or the salary cap um, cutoff, you know? So the NBA is putting in a thing, they're basically putting in a, a, a second salary cap high above for the team that do spend a lot of money and that are just way over the salary cap but doesn't, but don't care. Basically, they're putting something in so that those top tier teams that are in the really high salary cap can't keep going or can't do a lot of the things they do. Like they said, for example, like the Warriors, the Clippers, teams that have a lot of salary cap and are really into the luxury tax, but they still can make little veteran moves and make little trades and stuff like that. They're basically shutting that down. So it says, yeah, I'm on the ESPN article written by, Ro by Woj. It said teams will lose several key team building mechanics, including the tax player, mid-level exception, utilizing cash and trades, moving first from draft picks, that are seven years away signing free agents in the buying market and taking out more money that's being sent out in trades so basically like the top tier teams like the warriors and the clippers those are the teams that just examples so i'm using them like they do things like little things like they move a 2025 20, second round pick you know to get another player or they move cash to go get another pick and then use that pick to trade another play like they're basically stopping all that so that the top teams uh that spend a lot of money it's mostly, mo it's mostly like big market teams like LA teams and California teams and New York teams that do these little things to, so they can still try to save money still try to get some more players they're basically shutting that down because it, it says in the article the NBA decided punitive luxury tax penalties and not curb spending habits of some of the teams luckiest franchise franchises to exceed cap and leagues hope to, and leagues hope is these measures will bring more parity to competition yeah so they basically I didn't even know what the penalty was for being above the salary cap or anything honestly like I don't think there was any hard penalty I mean clearly not because teams are still crazy into the luxury tax and salary cap and just didn't care because they're like well what are they gonna do you know they can't do anything about it but now that's ending so basically all the top tier teams won't be able to do little things to keep signing players and keep being exceedingly above the salary cap which I think is good um the only thing is that it doesn't really like a lot of the people the examples they name of course are really good role players they say under these changes golden state's on steven chenzo joe ingles daniel Gonar, patty mills and john wall wouldn't be able to be signed um and they said the clippers acquisition of norman powell robert covington last season would not be allowed as la took on more money than they sent out in the deal with the blazers so yeah i understand that you know trying to stop the top tier town from just taking all the buyouts and taking all the really good players and keep exceeding over the salary cap but also it's like i don't feel like it was a big problem to be honest like i don't feel like it was a big problem and people were actually now i think about it actually no i think last year remember in the finals it came out that a lot of executives are mad that the warriors still had a lot of money and that the warriors um could find ways to actually sneak and still pay get, so keep their team basically together even though they had a lot of extensions they have to give out so actually no it might have been a problem because people were talking about that with Golden State last year um so maybe yeah I mean I don't really mind as long if this happened or not to be honest I don't really mind honestly it just makes the championship teams better and it makes it more interesting but I mean I don't mind that there's another side cap where a lot of the teams a lot of the championship teams can't just keep getting role players to keep investing role players they say they're trying to bring parity to the league which it could 
maybe bring parody, but honestly, it's not really doing too much to parody. But yeah, that was the first thing. Uh, also, one of the bigger things, well, you know, let's get this one out of the way as well. Uh, the NBA and MVP have agreed to increase the upper limits on extensions from a 120% increase on a current deal to 140%. Basically, teams, players that are eligible for extensions on teams basically have a bigger have a bigger increase. So basically, they could, they're going to get paid more. They said Jalen Brown was a big example. Jalen Brown was able to sign for a higher extension. Basically, it's just for smaller, for teams to pay more money to be able to keep their players. Basically, what it is. Um, that's cool. But yeah, let's get. But and then the next one, there is going to be an extra two way spot available. Uh, so teams now are going to be able to have three two way players, which is really cool. Um, uh, list some of the examples of guys that were two way players and now are still in the NBA. You know, Austin Reeves, Alex Caruso, Max Schuess, Duncan Robinson, Jose Alvarado, Lou Dort. Really good role players that come out of uh, the two way contract deal, and it's been very successful. So far as it was put in, so why not add another one? You know, it just gives the guys more opportunity, you know, to get to get playing time and get their NBA dreams become a reality. So that's cool. All right, now let's get to the actual, the real big ones. You know that we care about. The first one is about the NBA awards cap limit. It came out a few days ago before this came out that the NBA um, was talking about and wanted to put cap on how many games you could play to be eligible for awards. And it finally came out in the CBA said players have to be to be eligible for an NBA award or an all NBA team, you have to play at least sixty five games. Now it does says it does come with some conditions. I don't know what those conditions are. But the main thing is you have to play at least sixty five games to be eligible for award, which I think honestly Honestly, this was just kind of written, written in writing now. At least for all for the for the awards. Like I feel like I can't remember a time where we've had a player win an award where they only played like forty games and people were very mad about it. I don't I don't know. I can't think of any on the top of the head. Uh, at least like MVP and stuff. Maybe it might happen for like most improved or six man or something. But um, yeah, I mean this is a really good change, you know, especially with how load management and a lot of people missing games and sitting games has been happening you know now they said they're trying this was put into a, a, to um try to stop load management and be like all right you really want to win mvp you really want to make all nba and really all do this stuff all right you got to play can't kids can't just sit down anymore you got to play 65 games so you can miss at the most you can miss um like what set that's that 17 games the year but you, you you miss 17 games at the most after that it's like all right cut off um so still some sitting out but you know not as much as you should but yeah i like it i like it uh, i think this is honestly i think this kind of already was an unwritten rule by like media and stuff like that it was just like if a player played 50 games we knew he, we we're not gonna put him in the mvp <laughs> like he only played 50 games but now it's actually just kind of written in rule and writing like all right now officially you have to play this amount of games to be able to be considered for an award um and also with that it came out they said that all nba teams now are going to be positionless so it won't be two guards two forwards and a center for all nba teams now it's positionless it's just the best five players make the best 15 make the all nba team which i think yeah i mean i think that's should be a thing that should be happening um because of how many different positions like players don't like there's rarely that many like especially all-star level players that only play one position besides like Jokic only plays center and beat only plays center Steph only plays po point guard it, like besides that like a lot of the wings and the like shooting guard small four power four they're all interchangeable like LeBron literally is like a power four small four point guard AD plays power forward center Jalen Brown is a two and a three Jason Tatum is a three four he also plays two sometimes like the way positions are like there's no really locked in positions anymore and then, especially in today's game in basketball the positions are so like not don't matter like positionless basketball is a real thing so i think it's about time that the nba kind of recognizes that and does that to the only nba teams it which will make things honestly a lot crazier um but also maybe a little bit less crazier actually because the former all nba team you have to put two guards two forwards the center so someone might be knocked out just because positions they couldn't be in it 
But now with all NBA, you can just the top fifteen, top five, top five players. If they're all point guards, they're all three, they're all centers. They go on all NBA first team, <laughs> which means if it would happen this year, the all NBA first team would have like Joel, Jokic, Giannis. It would be a crazy team. But yeah, but also, but now they got to do this to the All Star game. The All Star game has to be positionless. I feel like, like it's been so weird the last few years with positions. How we have two like some play like Jalen Brown was classified as a guard, but he's actually a three, and I think All NBA he's a three. It's like uh, we got we just got to make. We we gotta make all all stars positionless. Just have the top the top fifteen the, the top twenty four players in the NBA, no matter what position they are. The top twenty four players are all stars. It's gotta be like that now. It's gotta we we gotta we gotta get that to go. Um, but yeah, like the the last one, the probably the biggest one is the NBA. The in season tournament could arrive as soon as next season. Um, from things about it, so the event. From this, from the ESPN article, quote: The event will include pool play games baked into the regular season schedule starting November, with eight teams advancing to a single elimination tournament in December. Final hole will be on a neutral site with Las Vegas prominent in the discussion. Choice said. So basically, the NCAA tournament would be a part of the regular season. So it's not going to be its own little event. It's going to be a part of the regular se- of your regular season games in November. I'm guessing it will start the tournament, the first round of the tournament, and then December those eight teams play against each other in December and then the final four will be a little later and then there'll be an 83rd game at the end of the year with the team the two finalists that won't it won't count the regular season but it'll be the 83rd game to decide the ultimate the ends the tournament winner um and the prize is I think five hundred thousand dollars um I think it's gonna be I'm, I'm very undecided about the NCAA tournament because I like the idea of it being a lot competitive I like that they put it into the regular season because at first when it came out I was thinking like in season tournament like if it's not a part of the regular season why would players even do it if it doesn't matter to the standings I like that they did that in the regular season and it counts towards your record so now players actually would play more, will give more of a chance to play in it and it actually will matter you know but it's just I think the prize like on it to be honest with you like five hundred thousand dollars for NBA players where actually it was funny because it just came out a few days ago about the highest average annual salary by sport and by league and stuff and the NBA was like number one by far the average NBA player made like eight got like eight point three million so five hundred thousand dollars to be honest for like guys like LeBron and Giannis and Tatum in them like they they literally like drop five hundred thousand dollars on the ground and don't even pick it up. Like they're getting a hundred and forty two almost they near two hundred million dollar contracts. And they're worried about a five hundred thousand dollar prize to win a tournament? Like of course the players at the end of the bench, the two way contract guys and rookies, they would be all in it. But if that's the case, most of those guys play in the G League anyway, put that in the G League. Make a G League tournament and have them win five hundred thousand dollars. That would be amazing for them. But for the NBA players, like, why? If I'm LeBron James or if I'm Kevin Durant or I'm Devin Booker, like, why would I have any real motivation and will to play in the in-season tournament if I'm only getting $500,000? Which is a lot of money. Not to them. I mean, money is money at the end of the day, but it'd be cool maybe to just add, get give, get an extra 500000 But, like, there's no real, like, incentive or real, like, Oh, okay. Let's go play. Like it was just kind of just they were just treated honestly like a regular season game. <laughs> they weren't treated like instant tournament. They treated like a regular season game. Where it's like, oh, oh, we lost. Oh well, you know. It's like, oh, okay. Like I feel like they wouldn't really treat this like an actual like what the NBA wants to, them to treat it like, which is the real in season tournament. I feel like the idea of it is cool. I like the they add it to the regular season. It's just they got to get the prize. The prize has to be more. But the thing is, I don't know what the prize would be, though. Like, where it's actually something they could do. Not just, like, an insane prize. Like, you automatically get two wins in the playoff. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, what a good prize would be that will actually make them play. It has to be something to do with, like, their team. Or it has to be something to do with, like, the playoffs. Or, like, a good, or, like, something like that. That's the only thing they would really try hard and get like try really hard for like I'm thinking about the stars and like the, the players that make the money like what would they actually want to play for 
that they actually would take this serious. It has to be something, yeah, with their team, or like a playoff, something like a playoff hindering, or like a you get an extra win, you get an extra like game, get extra rest day, or something. It's got to be something. I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I can't think of anything that it could be that's like realistic. Because I was gonna say you get an automatic playoff win, but that's that's not like they can't do that. Um, now you automatically get a top, maybe something with seating. Like maybe it's like you get an automatic top three seat, or you automatically get home court advantage in the first round. But then again, what if like a team that doesn't make the playoffs and wins the tournament? Do they automatically get into the playoff? Like maybe automatically you automatically get to the play get into the playoffs? Maybe I don't know. That might be cool. But then again, that would be that would suck if like the magic one. And it's like, bro, they went like tw- they won like twenty seven games and they make it to the playoffs. <laughs> like, and we just won like forty games and miss. No, nah, yeah, no, they can't do that. I don't know. I don't know what it's. It's got to be something. Maybe like an extra pick. Maybe I mean, an extra first round pick. But then again, like the the again again like the Bucks won't care about first Bucks and like the Warriors and the Clippers like they don't care about first round picks. They they're gonna trade them anyway. You know. <laughs> They're going to trade them for more role players. So they wouldn't care. Like, the Rockets and Magic and Hornets would go hard in that tournament. But, like, the Lakers would be like, oh, you can have it. The Bucks would be like, you can have it, bro. Like, we don't care about a first-round pick. He's not going to play for us. <laughs> he's going to he's gonna get waived in two years. He's going to trade it in two years anyway if he does play for us. Yeah, I have no idea what they can do. There's got to be something out there. I just can't think of, any, think of anything right now. But, yeah, the concept is good. It's just... They got to work it out still, which, you know, it was like with everything, you know, it's not going to come out right off the bat and be perfect. You know, maybe it's going to take a little while to get it really set in. Kind of like the plan, how the first the idea of the plan, we were like, eh, we don't know about how the plan works. And then it it took a little time and then we saw it happen and we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is, this is the, yep, this, this works. It's got, it's got to, it's going to take some time and it's going to take some tweaking and some changes that are going to happen every year to it. Um, but yeah, that's the new CBA. Um, yeah, very interesting things happening. You know, I'd like to see the NBA kind of progressing and seeing some of the problems and, you know, trying to scope them out and trying to make them better. Uh, yeah, of course, again, if you do like content on here, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, all the stuff like that. I really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.